Hey everyone, what's up? This is Kevin. Today I'll be doing a video on Pox Nora, a game by Sony Online Entertainment, and it is a sort of strategy type game where you <coughs> take turns moving your units on a square grid. So let's quickly get into game. I've played a little bit of this game, and uh, it's pretty good actually, and uh, has a lot of content in it, and you can also purchase new runes, they call in the game, which are pretty much like any other cards you would find in games to boost your deck and uh, you can buy them for gold or Sony online cash which is, you can buy up here so let's get into the game quickly and there's single player training grounds which you can use for playing against other people but not actually ranked play so you could just learn how to play the game or or stuff and uh, there's ranked play of course for the people who want to get competitive then there's tournament play which seems there's no one in here because no one is organizing one and then the bazaar which people can talk about trade negotiations etc so here are the basic campaigns you have walkthrough campaigns which are which give you free decks but the decks you get from these like starter decks you can't modify them which pretty much means that on the website you get to modify your deck with and put new runes into it but with these cards that you get from this like Kathir Forest which I've completed and uh, the Shattered Peaks, you can't use those runes and make a new deck. These decks are locked until you buy them with Sony Cash. These these decks are the ones that you have to buy with cash, so it's a bit disappointing, but besides that, there are tons of other campaigns you get. Basically, you get about two, four, six, seven campaigns for the advanced and the four beginner campaigns. And the rest here, you have to unlock via Sony Online Cash. Hopefully, they'll allow available for gold later. So let's just quickly get into a game and do the beginner raft battles. And I'm already on the third one against the Shattered Peaks, which are part of the Wrath faction. Pretty much the pro protectorate, pro protectorate faction is like the good guy faction, and the Wrath faction is like the bad faction in a way, the evil faction. So let's go ahead and uh, summon an Elven Fury over here with the Kithir for a starter deck and then their turn. You get a, you get 10 minutes uh, to finish your turn which is a lot of time actually. And it's pretty much there in case someone goes AFK or something. With every one of these starter campaigns, um, for the beginner campaigns, you they always have a unit that spawns here. And you want to get to there first because uh, if you don't, uh, you don't get as much regen for your uh, mana pool, which is up here, which is used to summon these units here. And let's enter turn again. See, graphically, this style is pretty, like, like, all based on drawings, which is really nice. And, uh, portraits themselves on the characters are okay, although some of them are pretty old, like this Elven Blade Master looks pretty old, compared to characters like this this or even this in a way let's go get the gold and then these are these spells that you can cast on people like brambles which means they will cost more movement every time they try to move with their AP which is what you get every turn if I use it right if I use it in an area like this that means they would be they wouldn't be able to move as efficiently so let's go save our mana so we can summon our forest dragon or elder garu later which is pretty much one of my strongest units and someone just casted a spell on me which I don't know what it did oh uh, it's right here distracted this champion is distracted and cannot okay so pretty much I can't do anything like heal which is pretty much it so let's quickly go into our room and get it and since we can't unlock it we'll have to put elder Guru all the way back here and you should place the pride of uh, Kithir when you can because what the Pride of Kithir does, if you are using the Kithir Force faction, is that it gives every single unit that you have currently and are going to summon 5 HP and plus 1 damage, which is pretty good. So that all your units would be pretty much getting a little buff over here. See, our, our front disappeared because there's a unit inside, which means you cannot actually have it. So let's, you should usually always place it back here. Uh, you should always place it somewhere back, so see, it says plus 5 on the top, so all our units have increased attack and HP, so they'll be able to survive longer. So let's quickly go kill this mountain lion, and uh, no, we cannot kill it, so let's move our elder group. 
Also on the orange slots are parts that you shouldn't be able to walk on with normal units like an Elven Fury or something so they'll fall and kill themselves. But fire units you can't unless they cast a spell that makes them grounded which means they would fall to their death. See the Elven Fury is a really tanky type of unit, sort of. So let's go up and attack this guy. See Elder Grooves which are two two units big are able to walk over it though and this can make them stealth but it's not really that useful because after they finish stealthing you really can't see them and they can't really move at all so let's go summon a ranger over here and then and this ability with the elven fear is that they're able to give their champ uh their teammate champion two more damage and but they lose two damage instead so it's pretty much like a, a give and take so if you want to make a ranged unit stronger, it's much better if you're really far away from a unit and you just give it to a ranged unit and they can deal damage from afar. So the thing about Elven Archers, since they're actually tiered as, I'm pretty sure, uncommon or rare, that they're, they're actually counted as a higher tier unit than most, they get uh, a really nice ability, which is Barrage, as if they hit someone, they get to shoot them again for free. I see it when you shoot, hit someone, you lose AP. And then every time you try to hit someone again, the AP increases. I see it was 3, and then it's 5, and now it's 8, which means it's pretty much impossible to really gain the AP. Let's move our Elder Guru up, up here. Move our Avenging Angel over here. And attack this unit. And then move our Ranger, who gets an innate ability to give him an automatically 5 move in the beginning. Can move all the way up here. Actually, Elder Guru is a bit weird over here, so let's move him over here. And I turn. Wonder why she can't move here. Oh, it's a little wall here that you can't actually see. So let's end our turn. And yeah. Oh, I didn't actually attack. Oh, I know. I actually attack. I did cast another spell, so I can heal, and I will take minus one damage. So let's put our elder guru finally up here. Attack this guy. And our ranger will attack this guy. And our El elven fury will have enough range to remove. So again, let's summon another archer type unit, which is the centaur. Or centaur, however you say it. Range is pretty limited right now, so let's quickly move up. And we can actually hit this guy over here, so let's shoot him. People die in this game, they drop these little orbs, which pretty much fills up your mana pool a little bit. So you see I got 9 over there, it's not really a lot at all. And right now, this Avenging Angel is probably going to die with only 16 health left, and I can't cast any spells on her, so just leave it there. Actually, let's attack and then leave it there. And the good thing about Ranger's ability, they're also rare, they're also called a rare unit, which means they'll cost 2,400 gold when you want to buy them, is that they have block and dodge. Dodge is pretty much means that you can put on you click on any ranged unit and if they attack you it'll automatically miss. For dodge, if you put on any other unit, like for this since he's melee, if you put on him, as soon as he attacks you, he will be he'll be it'll automatically miss and that he'll be paralyzed. No actually he will not be paralyzed. He'll just he'll just have to miss so it'll be a waste of attack. You see he just missed here. And then you get a hit him for free. Archer, which is really nice because they have a good amount of damage and they have a really nice ability. So we just can't do much, let's just walk over here. Get our centaur and walk over all the way here. And take our elder guru here. And we should move back with our elven with our avenging angel since she's going to die. But anyway, she will probably die anyway, so let's go and throw her there. The thing about the elder guru unit is that he has pummel, which means that he can hit people twice if he successfully attacks them. Since he did, he can attack again for another 15 damage, which is really, really high. Since you can't move, let's just move her back. And our Elven Fury is also going to die. So let's quickly take out this unit here. And he didn't. Oh, he did that. So let's quickly take this and back off. I think this game is really good for those people that like uh, strategy.
strategy type games and uh, it has a lot of depth because there are a ton of different decks and units but the only thing I think that's nice is that you can't buy stuff in the store and then you have to buy stuff like by going on the website instead of just opening the game, playing and then buying stuff and your gold doesn't actually immediately come onto your account you have to actually log off your game and go in but if you go on the website it'll actually be there so it's kind of weird because they don't update the game with the money until you log off and log back in but the website actually does have it updated so it's a bit weird here so let's quickly go and attack this crown sauropod person since i am able to walk on this because i am so called a big unit but for some reason i'm not able to so let's quickly walk into their base because if we walk into their base they're not actually allowed to uh, summon anymore because it counts as like a conflict so let's see what shield we can apply to our champion here you also apply this oaken mace which gives them to attack in one ap so right now we can't really heal her so we'll back her off we'll back her off over here and move our elven archer three spaces up so we can actually activate our barrage attack and hit someone like him Cyclops Mauler, and and our turn. No, actually, since I can go, I can now summon my Angel again. And your deck can hold, I'm pretty sure, 40 cards or somewhere near that, 40 or 30. And um, you're able to use a variety or just use one type, and then you get like this faction bonus or something. Savage Born used this charging type attack and did 13 damage. And now we'll summon another Elven Fury and move this unit up and move this unit up and attack. For some reason, we can't attack this Sora upon. I wonder why. It's because of movement. Yeah, I can't hit it. Weird. Big glitching here. Right now, we cannot attack that unit, so let's attack. Let's try to finish off this unit over here. And since she's going to die, you can use this supplement ability and give him attack damage. So when she dies, it doesn't go to the attack damage doesn't go to waste. And he can use the shield just in case he attacks him. And I'll move her up here behind them. Cast heal on herself. Because I'm greedy. Finally, finally end off our turn. The game does take around um, about 15 to 20 minutes. So it's pretty good too. It's not that long, it's not too short, so you'll have usually good games. But right now I'm on uh, normal difficulty. There's normal, hard, and then legendary. So I'm pretty sure I'll get harder than that. And, uh, it'll surely be not just uh, complete carnage on your side. So right now he's the ranger has 12 damage to the base. Uh, 10 damage, so that's really good too. So that means he'll be able to do lots of damage and cast his ability. He'll be able to do a uh, good amount of damage and his good defense. And he also has more move speed. So right now, let's go and move this unit over here and try to attack their shrine, which is what you're trying to actually destroy. And move this archer over here. And I think this sauropod's glitched because he's on a cliff of some sort. And she can attack, so let's use her special ability, which allows her to attack twice. Since he's going to die, I'm going to cast my heal ability on him, and then move her up and shoot this guy. And the ability for centaurs is that they have an increased range when they use a far shot. So let's quickly move up. Up and basic attack this unit and end our turn up here and up here and up here and then summon a forest dragon and finally end our turn. This is uh, good for uh, basic campaigns because it's introduction to it so you can actually get a hold of it. And after that they have the intermediate campaign. Here's a special unit and counted as a exotic unit which is the high higher than rare and after rare exotic is legendary and to buy 
mana loss actually since he's a really good unit is that it costs up to I think 35,000 gold and since you earn about 200 for first win every day and then you earn about 50 or so playing normal and I'm not sure about the other difficulties so pretty much it would take a long time to earn this unit here so pretty much the starter decks that they give you are pretty much uh, getaways for people who want uh, really nice cheap beginner units but the thing in this game also that's really nice is that units can level up up to three stars right now all my units are level one and since they're from the starter deck you can't level them up up unless you buy them and since this is a faction deck faction beginner deck like the other six other eight they have you can't level them up unless you buy them with the sony cash which is a bit disappointing but you can get the wrath starter and protectorate starter which takes a combination of both decks of both factions like Kithur is like a protectorate so if you buy the protectorate deck which is only 300 gold you get a couple of good units like uh, a few elven units too so let's quickly finish this guy off here so our guru will survive and end our turn movement over here and this unit is glitched I'm pretty sure because none of us can attack it either so let's end our turn and then finally take away their base after since it does not seem they actually have any um, it doesn't seem they actually have any Minerals left to summon anything, so let's go here and summon our rare unit, Menelaus. I mean, well, epic. Move every unit up. And finally, we can attack this Nexus. game over so finally finish the neck the shrine off actually I don't think we yeah 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 six HP finish him off with the avenging angel and then there's a little cool little cinematic type of approach over here where everything explodes and the shrine just things will start exploding everywhere so that's the game over and it'll show you the CP gain and your achievements that you can also earn level ups and the gold so I got 150 for first win. Now I have 390. So thanks guys for watching a video of Pox gameplay of Pox Nora and I'll see you guys like next time.